Hello everyone, welcome to 8th Ushak International Short Film Festival. I'm Saran, a member of the festival, and today I'm welcoming Brandon Lee Hickey to talk about his film, Distinct Properties of the Indonesian uh, Spotted Tree Frog. But I want to start by saying happy birthday, Brandon. Ah, Because I know today is your birthday, and I'm so, crazy. I'm so, so thrilled to share this special day with you. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is uh, I'm back. I'm back in college in New York, so this is 21 for me. So very exciting. Um, but yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> and for those who don't know, this is our second time with Brandon because he was competing last year as well with another film called Everything Bagel, which is totally worth it. You should just go and watch it. But today we are going to talk about distinct properties, and I gotta say it's one of my favorite films this year. So I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm just gonna dive in because we have lots to talk about. That I want to talk about the production of this film. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but this was your first big production film that you went into, that you produced yourself. But and you chose 60 millimeters to shoot it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very very bold move. So let's start there. Yeah. Well, usually. I mean, ideally, I'd love to shoot on film with everything, but it's prohibitively expensive, like most of the time. It's like way too expensive. So kind of like this perfect storm of uh, when the pandemic first started, all, all these schools in the States, they'll have their students buy film stock, right? And then when everything got shut down, everybody was willing to sell it really cheaply. So we were able to go to talk to all these people who had this film stock bought and just get it for only a couple hundred bucks. So we were like, okay, the 16 millimeter came first. That was like, we know we're shooting something on 16 millimeter. Uh -huh. And then it was like, we gotta make sure it's worth it and for the right project. Cause you shouldn't just shoot on 16 millimeter for the sake of doing it. I think it should be justified by the film you're doing, right? And so that's why we wanted to do it specifically for this film to sort of make it almost like, like this could have been filmed decades ago like it's just they just discovered this or <laughs> yeah. something lost in time you know so that was um that was the thing I was most excited about doing it I'd love to shoot on 16 again sometimes it's it's tricky but you know it looks great when it works definitely but but also it seems like you already put lots of effort in this before and uh before even shooting it so would you say like how long did you work on it? Because every single detail in the film means something and they're both, uh, they're all uh, incredible. And I don't know, I think I watched your film only the 10th time. And each time I watch it, I find something else on this 10 minute short film. So it's, it's obvious that you put lots of effort in it. How that uh, process went for you? Yeah, well, uh, I was really inspired by like, a lot of literary things like in 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 a lot of books you know like postmodern books especially I, I feel like the part of the fun part is you can read it multiple times and pick up on more subtextual things uh and i remember like thinking reading that that would be really good in a short medium because it might get exhausting for a whole film if every shot is super dense but when something's like a compact thing it's kind of cool when you like really just try and add a lot of interesting details and flesh things out. And I remember like, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson's a filmmaker I really like. And what I love about his movies is every time you watch them, you like, it's a different experience. Yeah. And to me, like, that's the ultimate thing is like, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could make a movie where somebody would watch it and then watching it a second time, it's like a different movie every time because they're seeing new things. So- Thank you for serving us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I thought that was like a really exciting, like, uh, concept to try and do uh as for how long it took you know not not terribly long because i think because of the nature of it's supposed to look sort of cheap and like an old tv show most of the sets are really like one wall or like our huh? a corner so it's really you know we didn't really do full sets we were able to really just decorate one part of a wall and since yeah. the frame is so sort of old we can get away with making the world feel bigger and larger just by packing a lot of details into that tiny sort of setup. Mm -hmm. um, so just going to a lot of like antique shops and stuff and trying to think like, what is this world that's adjacent to the world that we live uh -huh. in really like? Uh, because 
ultimately people won't go along with this concept. They might think it's too out there if it doesn't feel believable and lived in, like trying to make it feel like these characters were just catching them at specific moments in their life and there's a yeah. there's a broader world outside them, you know. Like there were so many little things here and there that made uh, all this universe come together, just like in everything Bagel too, actually. Uh, but all my last was I realized there was Salem cigarettes, which they're not produced anymore. How did you even find them? It gets crazy. Which ones? Sal I'm, maybe I'm pronouncing this wrong. It's Salem cigarettes, like the meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, Salem. Green. Yeah, 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 yeah. That took a while. That took a long time. <laughs> we were like, okay. But if you bust out a modern pack of cigarettes, that'll totally break the illusion. So if we yeah. find an old, old cigarette thing. And so like, I, li I lived in Washington state, which is like on the West coast of, uh, uh -huh. on the West coast of, of the United States. And uh, it basically, if you go a couple hours away from Seattle, you go to all these old logging towns. So these old sort of like, sort of Americana, sort of Pacific Northwest, you know, rundown communities. And that not only sort of helped us kind of find the look of this sort of coastal community in the movie, but it also helped us find all these old props at old like vintage stores and stuff. So we found those in like an antique store and we were like, oh, it's perfect. So that Thanks was, that was, it was <laughs> very exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you like that and like notice those details too, because we did I put a lot it. of work in so. <laughs> And you also act in this film. Uh, you're the protagonist. Yeah. And this is not the, the first time that you acted. I also watched Noah and Annie, uh, which was produced recently. So right. my question. I didn't direct that out. one. That was just something that I acted in. Oh. that was NYU film. So I didn't make that one. Uh, yeah, the director was someone else. I saw, but you acted right. in this one. So mm -hmm. my yeah. question was, I, I believe that you love behind the scenes a lot because you like the designing and the pre-production part of it. But what what do you feel like about uh, being in front of the camera? Are we gonna see you more in front of the camera? Yeah, really, like, I think it just depends on the project, obviously. So like distinct properties, I just realized that it would be really hard to convey that tone to somebody else. That it's almost like this performance is off and it's like an anti-performance in a way. And I I thought that would be really hard to like communicate that to somebody else. So it's really just from laziness. Like <laughs> it's easier to do it myself. But then uh, I don't love acting in my own films just because it's really hard to manage the whole vision of it and also be be in it but i really like acting in other people's things and i think acting is like a really cool uh expressive thing to do it's just usually better when you can kind of either be behind the camera or acting it's much more difficult when you're doing both so as much as i like acting i don't know how much i'm going to do it in the future but uh at least in my own films and maybe other people's it'll be different Oh yeah, come on. In the same properties, you were amazing. That was like the perfect <laughs> fit. Uh, but I understand why, because you probably created this uh, this universe in your mind for a long time. And it was just perfect to me. I'm so glad you liked it. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this another little thing that I uh, realized uh, after and loved is that when the devil comes in the same properties, there is this Anatolian rock band Mo Lars from Turkey uh, plays and we can say like they're one of the fathers of Anatolian rock in Turkey they're very important and first I said nah it's Cosby and the more I watched it the more it sink in how did you even bump into this song oh that's amazing I'm so glad you recognized that okay so basically like we were like okay wouldn't this be cool if we got a lot of like 50s and 60s old songs for this movie but a lot of them are like copyrighted so you know we didn't want to get hassled by using like old sort of american stuff so we went to all these record stores and found all these records from europe from like the 50s and 60s where we probably would have an easier time using them and people wouldn't notice that much if we used like these sort of 50s 60s pop records and stuff and so it would just be like going through different countries and trying to figure out what vibe would work for each scene and we were able to get like a lot of music that way. And then when we heard that track, we were like, oh, yes, this is perfect. This is, this slaps right here. So 
<laughs> yeah, it's cool though. It's the first time we did that for a soundtrack where it was like mostly older stuff that we we felt confident no one would give us a hard time using. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it really adds like such a cool texture to the movie because it really does kind of transport you back to that time in a way. It's very perfect. It's the atmosphere and the, the universe that you created. I love that. And yeah, I even imagine what would it be like um, an LP just coming across the Atlantic and then landing in Seattle uh, from <laughs> Mall Life. Yeah, that was amazing. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool track. <laughs> it's really good. It's a good one. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, we, last time we talked, it was one year ago, and you had your plans. Uh, you did some of your plans, maybe, because I want to talk about Big Kids. Mm -hmm. uh, where I, I couldn't find anywhere, though, so I'm so curious. How did it go? Yeah. So it's done. It's shot. It's cut, too. It's still in post-production, though. It's like uh, the colorist is working on it currently. So... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's definitely like the most ambitious thing we've done yet. And also right. trying to uh, trying to also show that we can do a movie that's like grounded a little bit too in the real world, like keeping some of those surreal elements. But, you know, distinct properties and, and uh, Antarctic cities are like very out there and like wanting to mm -hmm. make sure we can show people we can do kind of a balanced thing as well. Um, so it's more of like a coming of age movie. But um, yeah maybe next year at the film festival <laughs> we'll waiting for you, you know. <laughs> yeah no i'm excited about it it's still coming together but i i feel very very happy with it so do you know what around what time would be would it be a release maybe for the public i oh, still see a yeah. million <laughs> um, <laughs> probably within the next couple months actually so probably like maybe by february it might be it might be available I mean, it does sort of depend though. Some film festivals, you know, don't like it yeah. online. So it just got to kind of gauge where we're at and where we think we can submit it to and what would be some cool places to screen it. Um, and then like kind of go from there. But uh, yeah, it's coming together. It's coming together. Yeah, awesome. And I also saw uh, that in the, in the credits that Elliot Atkinson, your famous UOP, is uh, acting this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we finally get to see him. No, it's great. He, uh, he, he's got a crazy performance, and it is oh my uh, God. It brings me like a lot that. of joy. But it is difficult because you know, suddenly he's director of photography and acting at the same time, and oh. suddenly I'm directing and producing and acting at the same time, and we're the two oh, people yeah. who are invested in it the most. And also we're in front of a camera, so it becomes a thing where you, you much you have to do much more unconventional ways of shooting if most of the people who are creatively involved are also in the movie. It's a rewarding experience because they really get the tone. You know, like when you're working uh -huh. with actors, it's really hard to convey that. And people who creatively work with you, they sort of get it more. But also it's it's definitely hard. It's difficult to work with somebody who's shooting the movie, well managing lighting and acting. I think this is one of the biggest challenges that you would experience on a set. How, may I ask, how did you overcome that kind of... Uh, uh, directing and acting or...? Yeah, like everything at the same time. It's also another person who's very pivotal to the set. You can yeah. work... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes into sort of just a lot of prep work. Like we storyboard mm. everything extensively i mean it helps that, that most of our films are pretty locked off they're very like static and mostly just compositions there's not a whole lot of uh you know improvised camera movement um so what we do is we'll just board the whole movie before we shoot it and so by the time we get to set everybody on the crew because i also draw the storyboards like i uh i, I spent a lot of time on them yeah, so, so basically everybody on the crew already knows what the movie looks like, right? So everybody gets there and then we can all be like, okay, we're doing this shot. And so we've planned it out. Mm. It's sort of gotten to the point where for people, especially because we worked with the same crew for like three or four films now, people sort of have a shorthand with each other and we're able to just do the shot um, while I'm still acting and, and doing the other things. So I don't have to figure out everything on the day because then I would just get overwhelmed doing that much yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. So it just comes down to prep work, really. That's I think so. I guess you're a bit of a perfectionist. 
on the pre-production side especially can <laughs> you get everything over the top done uh yeah i think like i don't know it, it's that but then also i just really like every part of the process oh, like i like writing amazing. but i also really enjoy editing like if somebody else was editing i would be bummed out because it's like one of my favorite parts of it you know yeah and the same thing with production design and acting like it definitely gets if i ever like if i ever did like a feature film it would kind of be infeasible but for these 10 minute shorts mm -hmm. it is kind of something where part of why i like doing the shorter projects is you can you really can have sort of a control over or at least some sort of input on every department you know it can really be yeah. like a a very very personal thing you know whereas feature films such a large endeavor that it's really hard for it to feel like it's just coming from a, a personal sort of idea of things you know it's kind yeah. of amazing. so what is going on over there right now these days these months is it mostly the school work or are you already working on something else after big kids yeah <laughs> um a bit of both a bit of both sarah lawrence is very cool they kind of uh it's a school where we don't really have like uh, majors. So there's no like really sort of path of classes I have to take. So I can kind of awesome. do do whatever seems interesting at the moment. Um, so right now I've been doing a lot of like narrative writing too, like short stories and stuff. Oh, awesome. um, but after Big Kids next semester, I am doing another short film as well. Uh, <laughs> this time I'm not surprised. <laughs> And this is going to be the first short film that we shoot in New York, so I'm really excited about that because awesome. I think like uh, short films also to me are very much explorations of place, you know, about trying to capture specific uh -huh. places in, in time. And like moving to New York is definitely just a, a very different thing. Um, so I'm excited to, I don't know, discuss it and, and put it to film. So I think it's going to be a cool project as well. Awesome. Um, by my own excitement, I, by the way, I totally forgot to read the premise of your film in the beginning. Oh, yeah, so I'm just this point. Right like, what are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a hard premise to describe. I don't really, I don't know if the one that I, that oh, I did I does it. super concise. I mean, okay. uh, for the rest of the people should really go and watch the film. Honestly, True. please do that right now if you're watching this q <laughs> yeah. Um, so the premise is this. Life is silly, life is silly from the end. Officer worker in an enigmatic hospital community as he discovers the virgin and of power derived from a rare blue of cross. Come on. People. It's pretty concise. I mean, what a, you know, yeah. you know what you're getting into when you read that. You read that and you're like, I guess you know, I can't be this quiet. They told me what it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> and more. And more. That's my yeah. favorite character, to be honest. Which one? Who's your favorite Kyle. character? Oh, Kyle's amazing, right? Well, because it's me, it's Kyle, and it's just the long thing. It's so good. And then also the monologue that he does at the end. He just made that up on the spot. Oh. We're, talking, we're kind of talking about the big owl. And he just zooms out. It's like, what is he talking about? It's so good. I love him too. He's, so he's in Big Kids as well. So the three people who are acting yeah. in Big Kids are Elliot, me, and Peter. And uh, coming soon. That should get people excited. <laughs> so you guys know each other for a long time ago, as far as I understand. Yeah, we went to high school with Peter. He's a year younger than me. And Elliot is four years older than me, so he's already out of film school. But when I was a freshman in high school, he was a senior. And he was always like, you know, cool film guy. And I was like, oh, one day. And then basically, yeah, through circumstances of also being in Seattle way longer than expected because of the pandemic. And Oh, yeah. Out of time, not in New York. We just sort of ended up collaborating a lot, and now he's going to move out to New York. So uh, we keep making movies together, which is so cool. It's always good to have like a, I don't know, a supportive group of creative people that you can kind of work on each project with and make some more. Yeah, it's more fun, you know. Um, but yeah, so I, I keep in touch with both of them, and also I think they just very much are of the same mindset of what is interesting. In do something different than people haven't seen before. Um, and that creative sort of mindset. It's, it's really valuable. Yeah, definitely. Whatever this community does is gold. We've seen that, and I believe that we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, each time it's getting better and better progressively. 
So I'm just excited. I'm always a fan girl. There's nothing to do about it. So yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you guys like it. That's awesome. I I, uh, I really do appreciate the inclusion in the festival two years in a row. It's so it's you know it's always cool to have a chat about it. Get some good questions about the project. And thanks to you for your time today. Honestly, this was such a special place to share with you. And if there's anything else you would like to add before we go, please. No, I mean, if you haven't seen the short film yet, uh, I hope you check it out and enjoy it because I think it's fun, you know. If you can get past it being a bit odd, uh, have a good time. And uh, yeah, enjoy the festival, I guess. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you my list right after this. And thank you to everyone who watched us today. Uh, see you on the 26th with our directors. Bye-bye.